Hello, fellow switching enthusiasts. Enthusiasts. Henning Pauli here. Uh, your knowledge base for everything Joyo Switcher related. So, there's a video showing you all the different Joyo Switchers in Joyo PXL series explained. And then there's one for the PXL4, the PXL8, building a pedal board with each, a P the PXL Pro and the PXL Live. Now, I think those are enough so that you know what you are supposed to do with the Joyo switches. But I decided that for the PXL Live, since it has MIDI, we're actually going to do an online video manual. Okay? Um, and I will explain really in depth how to program it and what the different options are because MIDI is you know, something that the average guitar player doesn't know about and you might miss out on a couple of cool functions. So let's get into it. We're gonna start looking at the three different things it can do. A, pedal looping. So what are the loops and how do I switch them? That's easy. B, triggering. Triggering an amp, switching anything. Switching an amp, switching whatever. Anything that's got a switch input. And see the MIDI function, which is of course the biggest issue. So let's look at it. We're gonna quickly look at my board. It's a nice Joyo board, uh, pedal board, comes with, there's a case for it. We have the PX Alive here and the way that it's wired, the guitar goes into the input. Okay, then I've got one patch cable going to the tuner with some crumbs on it. <laughs> going to the tuner right here, the Joyo tuner, and then the first four loops have one pedal each. You can have several pedals per loop, but then of course when you turn that loop on, all the pedals in that loop will be active or whatever pedals are turned on in that loop will be active. So I've got one pedal per loop in this case, so the whole pedal board is carrying nine pedals including the tuner. So in my first loop I have the more yellow comp. You take the send into the input and the return into the output. I have very short cables as you can see that here so some actually don't go under the board because I made very short cables. The shorter the cable, the high, more high end the cable, the better will be your quality of sound of course. So loop number one is the yellow comp. Loop number two is the Joyo rated boost. Loop number three is the Milos Popovich Ganiac, very nice high-end uh, custom-made pedal from Serbia for a ridiculously low price. Uh, check out the video that's coming. And loop number four is the Exotic AC Plus. So all my drives are right here. And that doesn't continue here. That is going out of loop one out because this section is loop one. And that goes with the cable right here into the input of the PRS SE20 amp in this case. Now then the FX loop of the amp, the send, which is situated between the preamp and the power amp. Um, you want that, you want these pedals, these four, in the FX loop of the amp because we're also going to use the amp distorted. As soon as you're using distortion, you want your time-based pedals, meaning delay and uh, reverb, also may maybe sometimes a phaser or a chorus behind the distortion. So um, we're putting that behind the distortion. Send from the amp into loop 2 in and it's going through the Joyo Analog Chorus in L1, so loop 1 of the whole loop 2. Then it's going through the Al Capistan delay, then the timeline delay, and then the Strymon flint as the last one, that's the reverb and a little bit of tremolo. Okay, so we got two loops, one in front of the amp, one in the effects loop of the amp. The PXR Live enables you to do that. Now before we go into anything else, let's see how we program that. I'm going to go to an empty bank because I've got five banks filled with stuff which you do with the bank switches. Okay, very simple, you've got eight banks, it's showing you bank and then preset number. As soon as you push the bank switch, all the 
uh, other uh, lights will light up, except the one that you have pre-selected, but the lighting up showing you that now you are on a different bank. So only when you s switch to A, B, C, D will that preset be active. So we're going to go to bank 6 and I push A, which is an empty bank. Nothing is on. So let's say we want the compressor on, the rated boost on, which will be loop 1 and 2, and that I want through a nice reverb, which is in the effects loop of the amp, in the last loop. You hold the mute button, let's talk about the mute button for a second. It right now doesn't do anything. You push it once, and from that point on, it is sending signal It is sending signal to the tuner, but it is still sending signal to the amp. So if you want to tune while hearing it, that's what you can do. If you push it again, it is actually muted and still sending signal to the tuner. Okay, um, but uh, completely muted. So you have to push it, once you've pushed it once, you have to push it twice to go back to everything is normal. Um, so we're in bank 6A now. Nothing is selected. I hold the mute button, which is always how you get into program mode. Now if you do anything here, let's say I turn these on, and I want to cancel, you just push the mute button again and it's cancelled. If you are in program mode, you're doing anything, and you want to save, you hold the mute button in longer and it is saved. That is relatively straightforward. So we go back into program mode and turn these three puppies off. A, B, C, D correspond to the four loops and A, B, C, D correspond to those four loops depending on whether you are in E, H or E, L. Now that's very simple. High and low. So edit, high, edit, low. So far I can still follow the uh, abbreviation. So we wanted the flint which is in loop number four of the second loop. So I go in high and that's one, two, three, four. I turn this on. Now I want these two which is loop one and two in loop one. I go to low and turn these two puppies on. And that's it. I hold mute long. And there we go. Let's see if we have what we wanted. Beautiful. So that is actually all for loop programming. High and low and you use the ABCD switches to turn them on and off. Hold mute longer and you're saved. That's it. So loop programming relatively straightforward. We're going to go to preset B. In this case, we're going to go and program the triggers. Now let's talk about the triggers for a second. Right there is the PRS SE20 foot switch, which has a channel and a reverb button. Okay? Now, it is connected to the amp via a normal quarter inch cable, but it's a stereo cable. So that means the amp is getting two channels, two different signals, you know, for both switches. Now, the PXL Live compared to the PXL Pro only has two trigger outputs. The PXL Pro has four, but no MIDI. So we can actually accommodate these two channels with the PXL Live. The way I have this wired up is I have this, you can probably see these, these two cables in the trigger out, that's a pink and a blue one, and they're actually going into one, so that's like a big cable, stereo kind of, you know, dual cable, but that's ending up in one stereo plug on the PRS amp which means you can put that in the foot switch input and now these two mono cables ending up in one 
stereo cable and that is actually called an insert cable so if you want to buy this look for an insert cable you need this for mixing consoles to put something in the insert because it's a send and return in one cable um, so let's program these trigger one will switch the amps channel trigger two will switch the amps reverb on and off so Let's say I just want the reverb on and off on my setting B. Setting A is what we just had, and preset 6B will be the amp on clean with the reverb on. We go into edit mode. We're going to go past high and low loops, and now we're in ET. That's not the extraterrestrial, that is the edit trigger. Now, if I had four triggers, it would be one, two, three, four. In this case, it is triggers one and two. So I want trigger two, which is the reverb, to be on. So I push B. And you can see it lights up. Now, you can change the polarity, meaning if you don't want on, light on to be on, you want light off to be on. You know what I mean? I hope. Um, you can change the polarity, which you do here edit polarity. You can see both of them are in the on state, uh, state but in case you um, you want to send a different signal to your device, the opposite signal, you can do that. Now the trigger, the triggers have four different parameters. E in this case on. Okay. If I now turn trigger uh, one on, you can see the channel switches on my amp okay so we want the amp in clean with the reverb on that is the which trigger is on on the EB that is what happens when this preset number B 6B is going into bypass let me show you this I'm going to save this 6B is now in bypass you can see because these are blinking. If I go here, only this is on, which means 6B is active. If I push it again, it puts everything in bypass. We actually, let's program a couple of um, things in here. Yeah, lots of stuff on. So these are all on. If I go to B, they're all on. If I bypass it, so I push it again, all the loops are bypassed. But the PXR Live is capable of sending a trigger and MIDI signal on bypass. Now, what is that good for? You know, like that war song. What is it good for? Absolutely, lots of cool stuff. Um, okay, it's very simple. Let's say you, we are here on with all the pedals and stuff, but now I'm playing my rhythm sound. So I want to turn all the pedals off and at the same time switch my amp to the distorted channel. Now I can do this A with a trigger output or I can do this B with MIDI if my amp has MIDI. But I need to be able to switch my device, whatever that is, my amp, my reverb, whatever, um, by going in bypass mode. So if I now go in bypass, everything's bypassed. So let's program it to where if I go to bypass, it's going to change the channel on the amp. So I go to trigger, but when I go to bypass, I'm going to turn trigger one on, which will change the amp's channel. There we go. And I save it. So when I'm in B, first of all, the reverb will go on. But all these other pedals too. Now I go into bypass. The amp went to distorted. Channel 2. And all the loops went off. If I go back to B, it should go back to clean with the reverb on. There we go. So let me turn all these puppies uh, off here. Okay. So I can switch between distorted no reverb and clean with reverb on. So 
the MIDI section can do the same thing. It can send a MIDI signal on bypass. It's important to realize in case you want to bypass all your pedals, bypass the looper, but still send some kind of switching command. Okay, moving on to the other parameters. So we have the trigger, which right now is only when you push B, turning the reverb on. And in bypass, let's turn that back off. In bypass, it's going to give me actually just the clean. Reverb off, clean off. N. What? The, actually, I think what they're trying to say is M. Um, in the manuals, which is the, the, the Joyo manual is, you know, translated from Chinese. It's not perfect. Um, they, they omit a couple of things. This is supposed to be M. It says in the, in the manual MA on the MIDI section, but it will actually show up like an N like this. When they really mean N, it is a small, a lowercase N. So this is supposed to be M, lowercase is N. If you read the manual, it'll be confusing, but hey, just you know, follow me here. So the trigger mode, M, is the trigger mode, um, whether it is latched or momentary. What does that mean? Okay, latch mode means it is continuously kind of like, let's say you have an on-off switch, it's like continuously pushing on the on switch. It would be like this. I step on that and continuously send open, 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 open or continue to send close, 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 or whatever. Um, momentary mode is pretty much just sending a on-off signal. Depending on your device, it might need one or the other. So if it doesn't work at first, try switching it from momentary to latch, which you would do like this. Okay. So it gets, just goes to the other state, and that could solve your problem. So it's either continuously sending a signal or just sending a burst. Go on, go off, or on, off. You know what I mean? Okay. So, and then there's the P, which is for polarity. You know, is it is on, on, or is on, off? Is light on sending the one signal, or is light on sending the opposite? It's only, you know, it's a trigger, it's on or off. So those are the four states. ET is trigger on or off on preset. EB is trigger on or off on bypass. EM in this case is the trigger mode, latch or momentary. And P is the polarity. If you play around with these a little bit, you should be able to do any kind of switching task you want. And let me show you some. So if you look at the PXL Live video, uh, oh, sorry, the PXL Pro video I have, you actually see that I'm not switching an amp. There are other devices that are switchable, like this Joyo D seed. Okay, it's got an external switch input, which will pretty much take care of the A B switch because it has two two settings. It can save two different delays. And um, if you use the trigger output from one of these switches, the Pro or the Live, you can actually externally switch the A B. And remember, uh, with your preset, whether you want to use delay A that you saved or delay B that you saved, which is kind of neat because that actually gives you two delays in one box that can be remembered with any preset. So that's nice. And I also switched the Carl Martin headroom. Now, Carl Martin made a spring reverb in a box. And this is a real spring and it's a really big one and it sounds fantastic. But the problem is, as you can see, this is not a pedal that you want to put on your pedal board because it kind of eats up, you know, a good third of it. So in case you want to use this, it's a good idea to put it on your amp, behind your amp, wherever, put it in the effects loop. And Carl Martin was smart enough to include trigger inputs. So both these reverb select and bypass can actually be triggered remotely and you could use those trigger outputs for that and put the, re re put the reverb somewhere where it's safe, where it doesn't eat up the space on your pedal board, doesn't have to be in front of, uh, up front on stage with you and you can still switch it and include it into any preset you're building. 
So this much for trigger. Now let me repeat myself for the millionth time. These triggers are easy to implement when your amp, I'm sorry I'm, I'm looking at the mic if that's still correct, I'm not falling asleep. Um, they're easy to implement when your amp has a quarter inch input. Very simple, most amps have simple quarter inch inputs for switching. If your amp has a DIN input or like a MIDI kind of thing, it's pro probably a proprietary uh, cable that's going to your foot switch that is special to that amp. Um, might be channel A, or uh, channel 1, 2, 3, a boost and reverb on off, whatever. So it's doing more switching than just the two or the you know, three. You, would, you might still be able to manufacture a cable from that proprietary plug that goes into your amp to a breakout cable into several quarter inch cables so the switching can be done with a PXL but you have to actually contact the manufacturer of your amplifier or your other device and find out how it would have to be wired and then have someone you know manufacture it for you solder it for you make a special cable uh, a friend someone who knows what they're doing it's possible, but it is a little bit more difficult, okay? So, um, let's get into the MIDI section. Now we're talking. MIDI! Woo! Whew. M -I -D -I. Musical Interface, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Again, MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI is nothing but a command language. It is sending values in 8-bit bytes. What are you talking about? So, MIDI is sending words in 8 bits, 8 zeros and ones. Some things you want to communicate via MIDI only take two words, and some things might take three words. A program change message, for example, is a command that says please change the program anywhere from 0 to 127. Some devices, it's very 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 important to remember, actually don't have a program 0. They have a program 1, no 0, which means that your range will go from 1 to 128. The PXL Life does everything in increments from 1 to 128. There's no 0, and there's one more on top. If you're triggering a device that has a zero, you have to simply add one. Okay? Um, if it's switching to the wrong program, don't frustrate. It simply means that the two are you know, off by one. But I'll get into that. Um, so, program change will send two words. First will be do a program change. That's one MIDI information. And then sending a value from 0 to 127, or from 1 to 128. Um, and that does nothing else but change the program. Your amp could have, you know, 128 programs. You might do, you know, save, whatever, and then it's telling you the number, or you have to, I don't know how some amps work, but you can send them program change information, and they will switch to whatever you did. There's some amps where you, you know, set up certain things and certain knob combinations can be saved and then you hit save and then when you send a program change information it will recall those settings. Of course right here we got the Strymon timeline and if you can see right here see how the numbers are changing? Those are the banks. Now the special thing on these banks is that each bank has two sounds, A and B, okay? And each of the two sounds actually has a program change number. So actually, sound zero, absolute zero, is zero A, and then zero B. That's how the timeline shows it. So if I go to three, for example, that is bank 3, remember, bank 3 on the timeline, and it has an A and a B sound. 
But I can't send that information in program change. I can't send bang so and so much sound A or B. So how the timeline handles it, it does assign a program change to each individual sound. But I would have to figure out how what number to send from the PXL live. And since it has a bank zero, it can get kind of tricky. You have to figure it out. So it, I figured out I want to go on bank five, number A. So little math, bank five, sound A. Since it has a bank zero, that's one and two. So the next bank would be three and four. So the next bank would be uh, five and six. The next bank would be seven, eight. And the next bank would be nine, ten. And now, one more and then I'm on bank five because I have a zero bank zero sound a so whatever sound you want to get to bank number 18 sound B would be 18 times 2 that is 36 no yes 36 yes, 36, 36 so 36 plus 2 so we're at 38 so I have to send program change to 38. Your device, whatever it is, your amp, your rack gear, your, maybe you want to switch your, um, your keyboarders presets on the keyboard, why not? You have to figure out how, how to count, okay? You have to figure out how does it work. So, you know, you, you play around with the numbers and, and, and you figure it out. But let's say I want to get to my sound long and we just figured out it's number 38. We'll do it like this. Let's do it on sound. Well, wait. Let's do it on sound B right here. First of all, we're turning off the trigger again. So we go past the triggers, and now we're in MA. I'm going to briefly explain to you what MA and MB stands for. There's MB as well. Very simple, just the same thing as the triggers were with the trigger on bypass. MA is when you push the preset, MB is when you put the preset in bypass. It can send two MIDI information as well, two MIDI commands, when you put the preset in bypass. That is all it is. We're not going to show that, but in case you want to send a MIDI signal to your amp when you're bypassing the PXL Live, you can do that. So we're going to MA. Now, this section is done with because it is bringing that's like the menu top, the top menu. Now, with A and B, you're switching the individual MIDI commands or what you need for this. I'm going to show you. There's E, A, C, and N. And you have E, A, C, and N, one, and E, A, C, and N, two, because you can send two. MIDI signals, MIDI messages at the same time, per preset. So on E, I have now picked E with A and B, and now with C and D, I can actually define exactly what I want there. Right now it's off, it's not sending any MIDI message. The next one would be program change PC, and the next one would be continuous controller. We get to continuous controller in a minute. First, we're going to send a program change. Program change. That's it. How do I get out of this? One short click of the mute button. So I'm back to E. Now with A and B, I will go back up one. I'm on A. Now E, A, C, and N. Pff, not the most clever abbreviations because A is your MIDI channel. What's a MIDI channel? One MIDI cable can actually control 16 different devices. And how does each device know that the information that it's getting now is determined for it? Very simple, it has a certain channel. So you could put a MIDI cable in device one, out of that device into the next one, out of that device into the next one, that's called daisy chaining. And you daisy chain up to 16 devices, each device gets its own MIDI channel and then it filters out all the information that is not on that channel and only reacts to the information on that channel. Okay, the timeline has channel one. So with C and D, we're gonna see, okay, under A, it is sending to channel one. Let me tell you one thing. You're thinking, well, it can only send two 
messages, so I can only have two MIDI devices. That is absolutely not correct. You might just have to be a little bit clever about it. Situation could be this. You have a Marshall JVM amp that is MIDI, MIDI switchable. Put it on channel 2. And you're going to send information to it on channel 2. Now let's say you have a Timeline, a Mobius, and a... Is it Big Sky? I think it's Big Sky. The three big Strymon pedals for all the modulation, reverb, and delay goodness. You put all three of them on channel 1, daisy chain through, and they will all get the same program changer information. So when I'm sending program 16 to, uh, let's say, program 42, that's a good one. Program 42 to them, they will all go on program 42. Now all you have to make sure is on the preset that you're building yourself um, that on 42 are the sounds that you want to show up. So you can't control each one individually, but you simply go, oh, I like that sound, I want that there, save and save it to number 42. I want this, that's a cool one, save and save it to 42. So when the PX Up Live sends 42, they all go to number 42, but it's the sound that you want. It simply requires some preset moving, okay? But it's absolutely possible to switch more than one device, but you only can, you know, have two different channels. So, we are on channel one. I can change that, but we want that. So mute brings us out of there. Then I go to C1, which in this case will be the program change that we want. That is the program change number. We said we want 38 to get to long blah, blah, blah. whatever that is. So by holding, it counts faster, 38. Now I'm gonna save. I'm gonna change that here. And there we are on long slice, that's what it is. Could you see that? We're gonna do that again. I'm on bank 15B now. And we're going to go here and it changes to long slice. So our math was correct. Twice the bank number. 21 is 42. A plus 1 is 43. Okay. If you have a timeline. If you have a different device, it might be different for you. But that is really just trial and error a couple times and you're good. So... Um, as I said, now let's say let's say this was a MIDI switchable amp. I don't have one, so I can't really show that to you. Um, what you would do is, and you want to send a program change for preset B. We already switched here. Wait a second. Okay, long slice, and you want to send another program change. We're going to go to M A. A and B brings us to E two. We're going to go. C and D, program change, back. A2, channel 2, because your amp will be on channel 2, and back, and one higher. C will now send the program change number, and let's say I want to switch the amp to program 7. So it might be 7, it might be 8. You know, depending on how your amp counts. Does it count with the 0 or without? Because this one counts without. Let's say 8. Bam! And so now if I go to my preset B, it will be switching the timeline and it will be switching the amp. One problem, the timeline isn't even on. Did you notice? So we're going to go to the high ones, timeline's here, bam, done, timeline is on. So if I now go to preset A, I have you know, crap happening here and timeline on. I also might want my reverb on, on the amp. Huh. Would you do that with the trigger input? Or, well, if the amp is MIDI switchable, I probably would switch it with MIDI and not even bother with triggers. Right? Right. So this is program change. Relatively simple. In program change, please notice E, A, channel, C, the program, and N1 shows us nothing. Because a program change only has the fact that it is a program change and then the actual program from 0 to 127. So that parameter is empty. Now let's get into why you need that N1. 
Whew. You still with me? A lot to go through. But, um, sorry, this is just, it's such a freaking cool product, and we really need to go through these things in detail. The next thing we can do is a continuous controller. Continuous controller. Now, continuous controller is anything that you could imagine that could be changed in, on values from 0 to 127. Um, let's go out there. Lighting. I can change lighting with it. I have a knob. I can turn the light up, turn the light down. I can change the color of the light. Um, a pad on a drum set, on an electric drum set, sends velocity, meaning dynamic information, through continuous controllers. Okay? Um, velocity actually is a continuous controller. On any keyboard, you know the little wheels for modulation and pitch? They're sending continuous control messages. Okay? Um, there are certain ones that are fixed. Every company uses the same one, like pitch, like modulation, like volume. Um, and, and a lot of them are a sustain pedal on a keyboard. They're all always the same numbers. And then companies have, you know, the freedom to assign anything to their equipment. Now, Strymon actually gave a full MIDI implementation to the timeline, which is very cool. And that means that every parameter, the ones you see, but also the ones, if I hit the value here, I can go through smear, high pass, tap, blah, 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 then I can go to all these parameters and um, all the ones that are hidden, I can control all of them with continuous controllers. So that would mean I could actually have a uh, um, MIDI sequencer running in the background. I could have an iPad with a MIDI output controlling everything and twisting it the way I programmed it before. The PXL Live can send one continuous controller for each of the EOA. So if you're not sending a MIDI a program change, you could actually change two values and you can change them to a set parameter. You can't, you know, change them over time. There's no expression pedal on here. But you can send a volume, for example. You could send, or well, anything. For example, the timeline MIDI implementation is right here. I'm going to put this on the screen so you see what that looks like. Each MIDI-capable device has a MIDI implementation or MIDI specification chart. So look at your chart and see what you can control. I can control the knobs, uh, the type encoder, this one. I can actually change the type if I wanted to. The time, the repeats, the mix, the filter, the grid, the speed, the depth, um, the tap division, the boost, anything I want, I can control. Even cooler, I can control the looper. So, on the timeline, the looper gets accessed by hitting the tap button long, but pretty long, and to do this in a, in a, in a live setup would annoy me, and then you put it, push it long again, Okay, that's how you get out of it. But the cool thing is, you actually can, if you control the looper remotely, uh, just have it running in the background. And you're able to do this with this. You're able to do any uh, parameter that you want to control. Now let's look at this. Um, a Continuous controller needs three information. First of all, it needs information A, that it is a continuous controller. We can give that under the E parameter. Then which continuous controller, that's a number. And then what value do you want to assign to it? 0 to 127. We're going to do two different things. I'm going to switch the timeline to, let's say, long slice. Apparently, we're on it. And... How does that work? Okay, and um, I'm also going to change one of the parameters without saving the preset. Well, of course, the easiest way would be you get the sound the way you want it and then save it on the timeline, and then when you jump to it, it's there. But I want to demonstrate that you can actually use the PXL to send one other information. Let me see what we have.
okay? So let's say I want to crank the grid up for the preset that I'm building, which would sound like this. Okay, so I'm switching it now and grid is at zero. So what I'm doing is, let's check again, uh, E1 is set to program change on channel 1. 36 will end up to be, what was it, 18B. No, 38 is 18B, exactly. Twice plus 2. So it has no N value because it is a program change. So now the next one, E2, go to CD, will instead, that's off, program change and continuous controller. We're going to pick continuous controller. Skip out of that. On channel 1 and now C is which controller now I'm gonna look this up here grid is 16 but I know that they are counting 0 and Joyo doesn't so I'm gonna have to pick 17 with C and D okay so that's continuous controller 17, but now I also have to set the value and I want the grid all the way up. So I'm going to go to N, which is now the value for the continuous controller. Don't ask me why that is called N. Now I'm on 1, but if I go, if I go step back, I'm on 2.8. Now they don't have a three-digit display, apparently that's cheaper. So uh, that's actually kind of neat because it is 1, 2, 8. So as soon as the um, little dot, as soon as the decimal point moves over to the middle, you have to imagine that there's one. I'll show you. If I go down, number 90, 90, 99, and now 0, 0, 0.0, that means 100. That's kind of okay to, do with, to deal with uh, two points. So that means once I'm sending this information now, it should be switching to the long slice, but also move the grid all the way up to 128. I'm going to save this. I'm going to change to a different sound here. That sounds really bad. Do you hear that it's, you know, gritty? Let's do the same thing again, so you hear it even clearer, where the mix will be all the way up. Now mix is 14. I'm gonna go to MA and to E2, continuous controller is already set up. A2, the channel's correct. But now I want continuous controller 15. Okay, and I go back, and I'm already at 100, oops, 128. Good. Which means when I switch to it, I will pretty much only hear the delays. Let's try that. I'm gonna change this here again. It didn't save anything. Nice. Okay, one more thing we're gonna do kind of as a, you know, let's see if this is possible. I'm gonna go and pick a completely new bank here. Bank 7, sound A. 
Now this bank I'm going to call my looper remote bank. It won't do anything other than control my looper, meaning control my delay looper. So what I'll do is on bank seven, I control the looper, so I don't have to do the switching here. I don't even have to go into looper mode. And then I switch back to different sounds to play through the looper. So then I can go back to a different bank to you know do my uh, distortion or whatever I want to throw at the at the delay to put in the looper. But this is going to be my looper control bank. Um, something I mentioned in the uh, first video for the PXL Live. You cannot push a button twice to toggle a MIDI information because when you push it, it's sending the information. When you push it again, it's sending the whole PXL into bypass and therefore you wouldn't hear whatever you just did because the delays aren't going through there anymore. Now play is a button I need once. So I'm going to have this C will be my play, D will be my stop. But the record and overdub is a button you need to toggle on and off because while it's in the looper mode you need to be able to turn it off without re-triggering the loop from the beginning. So I'm going to have A and B both exactly the same so there will both be overdub and that way this bank of four uh, can actually switch the looper. You can of course also do the reverse full half speed pre-post undo which I could do on a different bank. So I could have two banks of four uh, being eight functions for my looper if I wanted that, but let's do it re relatively simple. All I'm going to do is put the timeline in the loop, which is this one. Timeline's in. And now I'm going to go to MIDI and I'm going to send, I'm not going to send any program change because whatever delay I picked before, I want to be on. All I'm going to send is a record a continuous controller. And that is 87 here, so I'm going to have to do 88. So E1 is continuous controller on channel 1, 88. And funny enough, the value, any. So anything between 127 that the timeline receives, it will see as a record button. So that's neat because I don't even have to go and do anything here, okay? So anything works. Good, and I save that. And I will, I will repeat exactly what I just did here. So I have two of them the same so I can toggle the looper, which means AMA, E1 will be continuous controller, channel is fine, and that's 88. Okay, and then play would be 87. Hold it to save, okay, and then play will be 87. Again, I will turn the delay on. MA, E1 continuous control, gone, channel's fine, and save, because the value doesn't matter since we know that it, it accepts any value. And then we're going to go to C, turn the delay on, MA, Continuous control, channel is 1, and that would be 86. Good. So, technically, we got looper control. Want to test this? Let's test it. Kind of tough without, you know, using my feet, but here we go.
Okay, well, A and B is uh, now overdubbed, both of them, so it doesn't matter which one I pick. So now I'm in overdub, and technically, I could go anywhere I want to now. So I'm in A and I want to turn the overdub off so I can hit any of these. So I should just be in play mode right now. So let's switch to the looper and see. And that is correct. I'm just in play mode. If I hit A or B, I'm in overdub. And now I have to hit, hit B, not A, because I will go in bypass. There you go. Because if you, if you hit play, it will start from the beginning. So um, it's nice to have two overdub buttons. about the worst loop I've ever built in my life. <laughs> um, but as you can see, you have the options of controlling more than the program change with the PXL Live. If you're a little bit creative, you will be able to do a lot of switching functions with this puppy. And of course, at the same time, switch your amp, switch the reverb on your amp as I've shown. I hope this helps. Remember, E is off, program change or continuous controller. You, you pick which MIDI information you're sending. A is the channel. It has to be the same as the device that you're switching. C is either the program change value or the continuous controller number, which you will find in your MIDI implementation of your device. For an N is nothing for a, a, a program change. It's doesn't, it doesn't get used, or and if it's conti a continuous controller, it is the actual value that you want that controller to be. And the difference between EACN1 and EACN2 is nothing but they're two different information, so you can send two things at a time. Okay, you could argue, do we need more? Do we need five things at a time? Well, at some point, you know, 170 bucks. Did I mention that? Okay. You know, if you want something that sends a lot more information and is a lot more complicated, obviously you're going to spend a lot more money. So, I think this is already very, very cool and you can do many things. I love the fact that I can actually uh, have my timeline in my normal delay mode without, you know, holding the button for half an hour and still control the looper from, from here remotely, which also means I don't have to have the timeline up front because I would hit a lot of other pedals doing this so this is really neat and um, I will personally never leave this room without one of these on my board so of course if you have questions please write I know you will I made this video so that you don't but you will I love you anyway pedal nerds <laughs> see ya I'm out <laughs>